The Chamber is pleased to present the 2010 Entrepreneur of the Year, Mr. Bob Curry of California Cartage Company. California Cartage is a uh, large group of companies that do uh, deconsolidation work, uh, reshipment, and trucking, and we've got operations throughout the United States. My grandfather funded my dad, who started the business as a little four truck line operation that operated between Los Angeles and San Diego, moving aircraft parts for the companies who were involved in the war effort. And we grew to a company that operated out of the LA Harbor to LA and to San Diego. And that's the way it stayed until the late 60s, when I went to Japan and we secured a contract with the Japanese steamship lines. Trepak Mitsui Osuke owned has had a long-term relationship with Mr. Curry, over 50 years that he's been working closely with the Japanese. So if you wanted to work at Trepak, you had to have the approval of Mr. Curry, okay, because the Japanese considered his opinion as being the Bible for an American staff. The combination of deregulation and unionization in the mid-80s meant Cal Cartage found it no longer affordable to remain in the trucking business. So we closed the truck line, kept the other part of the business, and then just started to uh, change everything that we did and moved into a different way of doing business. In bold entrepreneurial fashion, Curry grows Cal Cartage by expanding warehouse operations, opening new distribution centers, and offering deconsolidation and logistics services providing innovative and successful solutions to help major retailers move their goods from the ports and then unload the containers, separating, warehousing, and shipping on demand to distribution centers throughout the country. We have many warehouses in Southern California. We have a 500,000 square foot facility in Ontario, another 500,000 square foot facility in Torrance, several in Carson, a big facility in Savannah, another big facility in New Jersey, one in Chicago, and we have trucking operations in the Pacific Northwest, in the Bay Area, Southern California, Memphis, Chicago, New Jersey, Norfolk, Savannah, Charleston, and we also have a large operation in Mexico, both Monterey and Mexico City, as well as all the border cities. Everybody that does trucking for us is an owner-operator. He contracts with us and we have helped him acquire all the new trucks that are now in use here in Southern California. We made all the arrangements with the bank, with the AQMD, with CARB. We made the contracts. The driver then has a truck that he rents from the bank for a five-year period, and at the end of the five-year period, he gets an opportunity to buy it at a very nominal price. The more work they do, and the fewer hours, the more money they make. And I think that's one of the reasons they like to be owner-operators. You know what, I'm a product of my dad. My dad worked all of his life, and I watched the way he handled people. I watched his kindness. He got a call from his HR department, and I could hear the conversation that he was having on his cell phone. I don't care what our policy is of our company. I went to the hospital to visit this person that was hurt badly loading a container, unloading a container. He has, he's very bad shape, okay? He cannot make it on disability payments. He needs his check, okay? I don't care about what the insurance policy is or anything else. Send that man the money. He needs it for his family. That's the same person I know, okay? The guy that would sit down and with each one of his employees, if they're in trouble, if they need help, they could go to him and he would quickly react to them. I've always said, I'm gonna run the company the way he would want me to run it. And that's the way we do things. I personally am at a lot of the different facilities and many times uh, Mr. Curry will come in and he's recognized by everyone because he knows everyone in the organization. And even down at the dispatch offices, he's shaking hands with the drivers and they all know him as the big boss and he has a good relationship with everybody on the front line to every level of management. Bob has always been forward-looking in the industry uh, 
And by that, uh, in later years, it's come to mean clean trucks and clean air. And Bob, of course, is at the forefront of that. I met some people in West Long Beach who were critical of us. And one of the gentlemen came over and said, you ought to clean up your place. And frankly, I was shocked. He was very nice to me, but he said, you know, you ought to get some clean trucks. We, we people live in West Long Beach, and we, we don't like these dirty trucks. And I thought to myself, I wouldn't want a truck parking across the street from me if I didn't have it. And I also wouldn't want a dirty truck over there. And that was the start of my thinking towards the fact that we had to go and get new trucks, clean up, and at that same time, both ports began to think about the same thing. It was an old fleet, uh, poorly maintained, and both ports recognized that we needed to clean up those fleets so that we would reduce the harmful impact of diesel exhaust on the communities. So the combination of the uh, ports doing what they did, my own thoughts, and several people that really contributed to me doing what we did. A year later, we got a huge grant that started us with 132 LNG pieces of equipment. And we got the bank and the drivers, the AQMD and the CARB and ourselves to sign a document, which was really very difficult. Probably the best example of uh, why he is such an entrepreneur is born out in this new clean trucks program that the Twin Ports are doing. Uh, he has taken a lot of risks. Uh, he guided a lot of what that program's all about. Uh, it's his financial commitment that uh, really set this program in motion. Uh, they've gone out and they've done a lot of LNG trucks. They've done a lot of regular clean diesel trucks. There was probably 60, 70 million dollars worth of help that was given to our industry. And now there are no more dirty trucks going in the harbor. I have three boys and two girls. And all of them, one time or another, worked in the business. Two girls are accountants and they worked in the business and when they were going to school and after school. And uh, my oldest boy runs our CMI operation and my two other boys at one time or another did work in the business. In addition to playing a lot of golf, Bob Curry is a partner with his sister in another longtime family business, Ridgely Farms, which raises thoroughbred horses. One of our greatest thrills was taking our gray horse, gray memo to Dubai for the big million dollar race. We were invited, had all of our transportation for ourselves and our trainer and everybody else paid for Gray Memo lassoed the lead. A hundred meters left to go and the American Gray Memo is roaring away to win the Godolphin Mile. I think the one thing about Bob is uh, uh, his, his word is his bond and uh, he's a guy that you can shake hands with and know that uh, he's gonna shoot straight with you. Probably three words that sum Bob up best would be uh, loyalty and integrity and honesty. And that always goes a long way in uh, any business relationship. You know what, I'm very blessed that I have a whole group of people much smarter than me that make me look very good. And that's the truth. I'm sort of like a coach on a basketball team. Uh, you know, Phil Jackson probably would not coach the New Jersey Nets because they're not a bunch of good players, but he coaches the Lakers because he's got some good players. And I kind of feel the same way. You can have all the, uh, the people in the world, but if you don't have good players and good talent, you're not gonna get anywhere. Mm -hmm.